Pastor. I, I, uh, I have much respect for both of you. I uh, honor the call of God that's on your life, and I honor the faithfulness and the uh, integrity. You've operated in that. That's why you're still powerfully in the ministry, and God's blessings will overtake you. Yes. You'll not ever overrun them. They will come on you. They will overtake you. Yes. They will flow into your yes. life to the point that you will be a distribution center, Amen. and people will be blessed by your blessing. Amen. People will call you blessed. Yes. Amen? Amen? And I honor you, and I appreciate you, and I thank you so much. And I appreciate you coming into that uh, hospital room in 1977 because I'm going to be honest with you, I was a mess. I was lost. And uh, three years later in March of that year, I asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be my Savior. I heard my dad, <clears throat> heard my dad talk about him a lot, <clears throat> and I knew he existed. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I didn't think that he cared about us as people. But I've learned over the years as I've developed a relationship with him, he has become my personal Savior. Amen? Amen? And I've learned that I have a personal relationship with him now. And he, he wasn't mad at me when I was laying in that bed. And, and uh, Jesus had... And he did for me exactly what he said he would. He saved my soul, cleansed me with the blood of Jesus, and we're still here. And... Uh, why he called me into the ministry, I don't know, but he did. And so we're trying to fulfill that call that God has placed on us. Stand up for me, darling. This is my precious wife, Connie. I like to say this. I, I got this sitting there. Uh, I felt this come up in my spirit. She is the other half of Fully Persuaded Ministries. Amen? Amen. And so I'm thankful that God gave her, gave her to me, and she's been a godsend. I, uh, I just want to say, uh, March the 15th uh, was when I got shut down. I stayed shut down until eight, nine weeks ago. I, we've been on the road the last eight out of the nine weeks. I took off July the 4th. But the Lord said, I want you to start every service uh, in a certain way, and I want you to have the people to pray with you concerning what I want you to, how I want you to start the service. So if you'll do this with me, let, let's pray. Father, we thank you because you are the God of all. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God of heaven and of earth. Right now, we take our place in the of God. You said we have the keys to the kingdom in such a way that we say COVID-19, cancer, any sickness and disease, we bind you right now. Then God will bind you from heaven. And we loose upon this people, on this building, the health of God. We loose upon this building and in every person here, lose health from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. We say boldly that the power of God is working in our bodies right now, that if any cell of any sickness would touch us, it would immediately be extinguished and die and fall harmlessly at our feet. And we will walk in the health because you are a shield and you're our protection. And we thank you for your great reward in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 You know, uh, <clears throat> Pastor Dorothy was talking about the shield of faith. I found out something about it. It is your shield, but the shield of faith is not a literal shield. It's your tongue. Well, let me say that on this side. The shield of faith is your tongue because faith is inoperative if it is not released with a work. And we release it by an act by our tongue. So the shield of faith is your tongue. When your tongue speaks the word of God, it will extinguish every fiery dart that the enemy would fire at you. It will cause it to be extinguished. It will cause it to be inoperative. It will cause it to be powerless in your life. Amen? But we must speak it out of our mouth, not because a preacher tells you to say it. 
As you hear or read used to say it, we say it because we believe what we're saying. Amen? It goes a little farther than just reading the Word of God. Faith does come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, but hearing the Word does not guarantee faith. But I guarantee you, you have to hear the Word before you can have faith. Amen? Because no report, no faith. There's no way to have faith without a report. you got to have something to believe in. Amen? Yes. If you'll turn with me in your Bibles to Romans, we'll go there. I'd like to touch on that just for a moment. And then we want to talk about taking our place in the kingdom of God. Romans, the 10th chapter. It says, 13th verse, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Did you hear that? Yes. Say this with me out of your mouth. I am a whosoever. Therefore, this scripture applies to me. Say this with me. I have called upon the name of the Lord, and I know I am saved. <laughs> Glory to God. If you know you saved, the battle's won. Yes, it is. The battle's won right there. Glory to God. Now, let's go a little farther here. It says, How shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, No man can say, God, Jesus is the Son of God without the Spirit of God. And no man can say Jesus is cursed with the Spirit of God. Amen? It says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Amen? Go with me to Acts 19. Hold your place there. We'll be right back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Acts 19. Start in the first verse there, if you would. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you have believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Can I say this right now? If you haven't heard it, you can't have it. Amen? If you haven't heard it, you can't have it. This is why many people are not healed because their pastor tells them healing has gone away with the apostles. You see, if they haven't heard it, they can't have it. This is why many people are not filled with the Holy Ghost to experience the power that the Holy Ghost adds to your salvation. It's because the pastor says that speaking in tongues is of the devil. Amen? You see, they haven't heard it. There is no way you can receive your healing if you don't know that healing is available. Amen? So it says, how can they, uh, it says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? We don't know that there is one. He said, well, unto what were you baptized? They said, unto John's baptism. John came, his baptism caused them to have repentance. It, it, it caused them to repent of their sins, but it did not cause them to be born again. They were in repentance. At that time, that was the closest you was be repentant. Be baptized. You were, you were in a measure closer to God that way, but you were not in God. You were not. You were just baptized unto repentance, all right? Let's say that was just a pre, preview of your salvation. Now let's go on a little bit farther. Then said Paul, John, uh, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues, and they prophesied. You can't call on him that you have not believed. You can't believe on him that you have not heard. When they heard, faith came. Faith rose up in their hearts. They showed that when they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. You see, it caused them to be motivated to be baptized a different way. We're already baptized with John. Somebody will say, oh, why do I need to be baptized again? 
because you need to go from repentance into the new birth right there. Glory to God. And when they did that, faith rose up in their heart, and Paul laid his hands on them, and they spoke with other tongues and received the promise of God right there. Now go back with me to Romans, uh, the 10th chapter. How shall they if they have not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher? Can I stop right there just for a moment? When all this started happening, I began to search the Bible to find out where we are. I began to try to find what we're dealing with in the Bible. And you know what? I couldn't find it because I know this is not the tribulation because we're still here. Amen. Well, let me say that on this side. I said it can't be the tribulation because we're still here. And I know one thing. God is not going to allow his children to go through the tribulation. And I know I'm on the first busload out of here. People say, well, are you pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib? I'm on the first busload out. Wherever it happens, I don't have enough sense to know when it's going to happen, but I can promise you one thing. I'm on the first busload out of here. Amen? And so this can't be the tribulation because we're still here. So I continued to look at it. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord began to deal with me about some things. And I heard this come up in my spirit, Antichrist, Antichrist, Antichrist. And so as I did it, I began to study. And I found out, you know what we're seeing? We're seeing the spirit of Antichrist. Yes. Yes. Amen? This is what we're seeing. It's Antichrist. You see, it says, how can they hear without a preacher? Well, if you can't go to church, you can't hear a preacher about you, but I'm thankful for Facebook Live, but it just don't get it for me. I got to be here with you folks. There's something about being here with people of like precious faith. It bleeds over into me. It makes me just want to, you know, act funny sometimes because I'm here and if one can put a thousand and two can put ten thousand, my God, how many can we put to flight? Amen. So we're dealing with the spirit of Antichrist. It's not the Antichrist. It's his spirit. Let me share this with you. It's, it, it, this, is just a, this is just a taste of what the tribulation is going to be like, honey. Let me stop right here. If you're not here, if you're here and you're not saved, you might want to get right down here. <clears throat> you might need to talk to this man right over there right now because you don't want to mess with the tribulation. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I began to see that it's the spirit of Antichrist. And so suddenly on the, we, uh, we've gone through things like this before. What, what was the first thing that happened? People flocked to the church and got on their knees. How are we ever going to come out of anything that we're dealing with without God's help? I'm not smart enough to get us out of this. I'm a truck driver by trade, dear God. I'm not smart enough to tell you what to do about COVID-19 or cancer or anything you deal with in life, but I tell you, I know the one that can, <clears throat> and I know how to contact him, amen? I know how to get in his presence, and I'm going to tell you something, praying at home by yourself is good, but honey, when you get in around here and get on your knees in a setting like this, honey, things happen. You remember when they were let go from prison and... Uh, they went back and they began to talk and they said, why do the heathen rage and why do you imagine vain things? And they began to talk about Jesus and all of a sudden he said, and when the place they were assembled was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God boldly. You can't do that at home by yourself. Don't get me wrong. The Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. But I'm going to tell you what, the effectual fervent prayer of 40 will avail much more. So we begin to see things. Thank you, honey. <clears throat> oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So I begin to see the spirit of Antichrist. People were talking about making derogatory remarks about Israel, that's shaky ground. Yes. Amen. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Right. You know, I don't have any hard feelings toward these people. They need Jesus because they're, the spirit of Antichrist is working unhindered in them. 
And so they begin to talk about that. Then all of a sudden, church became non-essential. Isn't that amazing? Church became non-essential. If you got a plumbing problem, you could fix that. You could go to Lowe's, Home Depot. It's amazing. Here we are with a bigger problem than a plumbing problem, but we can't go to the place where we can get this problem fixed because it's non-essential. Now, when our government calls the church non-essential, you know that somehow or the other, the spirit of Antichrist has got into our government yeah. and it's almost yeah. ruling in our government. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And the Bible says it's when the righteous are in, are in power that the people rejoice. Yeah. When the unrighteous are in power, honey, it's going to be something you never want to experience. And if church is not essential now, what happens then later when people of the spirit of Antichrist come in contact or come in and become uh, in the controlling? Honey, you're going to have to have church in your basement. Yes. Yes. So I began to see the devil in this. I said, this is what this is. This is the devil. <clears throat> Now, I hope I've been here enough, and I hope many, most of you have heard me long enough to know that, that I love this church. I love what it stands for. But i got to say this. What we're dealing with today is nobody's fault but the church's. Amen. Yes. It's, it's the church's fault. I got a holy hush. I knew I would. Turn with me to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. Are you doing all right out there? Second yeah. Thessalonians. And look right here. Let's start in the first verse of the second chapter. <clears throat> now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus and by our gathering together unto him. If you don't believe in the rapture, then you don't believe that scripture. That's not talking about going to church on Sunday. That's talking about gathering together unto him on the day place. All right, let's go a little farther. <clears throat> Excuse me. That you soon, that you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Did you see that? Many people think that that's people qu uh, stopping going to That's not what they're saying there. That great falling away is the rapture. And the rapture, the son of perdition, the Antichrist himself, cannot be revealed while we're still here. You missed a chance to shout right there. Amen? Amen? Amen. So that means if he's not here, we're not going through the great tribulation because he can't be revealed while we're here. Amen? And nobody on the streets of gold is going to walk up to you and go, well, who do you think it is? Because we're not going to care. Amen? We're not going to care. We're not going to be able to get our eyes off of where we are. We're just going to go down to the throne. Are you talking about having a praise party? Go, oh, Lord, can you imagine that one? Gather around the throne of God. He's going to light the place up with his glory. One hand without doubt. Go, I praise you now because I was praising you when I couldn't see you. Now I'm praising you because I can see you. I got we've been preaching about and I'm praising you Heavenly Father because I've got my eyes on you now. Glory to God. The Antichrist will never come up in the conversation while we're here. The, the Down here on earth will never come into our conversation again because when we leave here we're never mindful of this place ever again. No man, having put his hand to the plow, looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. 
<laughs> when I'm out of here, I'm out of here. Glory to God. <laughs> well, go ahead and shout just a little bit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I'm looking forward to that great falling away. Glory be to God. I'm sorry. Y'all didn't come here for me to scream at you. Let's read the third verse again. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worship. Hold on. What are we seeing right now? We were just instructed, or the, the uh, request was made in Kentucky that all churches need to shut down again for two weeks. And I want to tell this man, that's where you need to be. Because wearing a mask ain't going to, wearing a mask ain't going to help. I'm not telling anybody not to wear one, but honey, wearing a mask is putting a Band-Aid on it, honey. We want the thing to be eradicated. We want the thing to be gone. Only one way to do that. That's with the power of the almighty living God. Who you say is non-essential and telling us to stay away another two weeks. It's the spirit of Antichrist. It opposes and exalts itself above everything that's called God. We're seeing it right here on the earth today. When you start telling people, if I catch you in church, you're going to jail for a year, it's the spirit of Antichrist. Now, let me, let me just, I'm going to have to say this, but I am disappointed in a pastor who says, well, let's just go ahead and shut it down. I don't want to go to jail. I hear what I have, you know what I've had them tell me? I don't want a lawsuit. In case somebody comes to my place and gets it. When you've got an advocate in the heavenly realm who is pleading your case right now, he'll pay your fine. I'm just waiting for pastors to stand up and say, no. You're not essential. We are the essential ones. And we will be having church. So we'll have it here or we're going to have it in jail. I'm either going to have a church or I'm going to have a jail ministry. So come pick me up and put me in jail. I'm ready to go wherever I am. I'm going to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the most essential thing we'll ever need in our life. Yes. Well, Lord Jesus. He says he opposes and he exalts him that's called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Now, honey, that's called the abomination of desolation. Yes. Let me share this with you. You definitely don't want to be here after that. Yeah. Jesus described it as if there will be more tribulation after that that's ever been seen or ever will be seen. And if I hadn't shortened the days, no flesh would live through it. He shortened them to three and a half years, 1,200 and some odd days. He shortened that up so that uh, even the ones who are saved during the great tribulation would live through it. Let's go on a little bit more. Are y'all doing all right? Am I confusing anybody? 
Okay, I knew I wouldn't because you've been taught well here. You see, I can say things in this church I can't say in 90% of the churches I go in because it'll choke them. I'm not criticizing. I'm just telling you the facts. I, I had to learn that the hard way because I had more hard times at lunch when I didn't know. I just thought everybody had been in my church. Pastor taught like my dad did. I thought you could say anything in the Bible to these places. Oh, no, no, no. You got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them, honey. I've had a lot of lunches and the person next to me going like this. When they do that, you know you're in trouble. I got a bone to pick with you. I said, what is that? Well, I don't agree with what you just said. I said, well, then you don't agree with the Bible. That's right. I said, I'm going to let you and God deal with that one. Amen. I knew I wasn't going to preach there anymore anyway. <laughs> Watch this. Look in verse 6. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in this town. Let me break that down into plain English. He said, and now you know what's holding him back. Now, let, let, me, let me talk to you just a minute. If there's one holding him back, then the one holding him back has got to be more powerful than the one who's trying to be revealed. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And now you know what withholdeth. <laughs> we know what withholdeth. There's three of them, the Father, the Son. So that tells me that if this man can't come forth because of their power, then we've got power over his power. Right? Why do you say that, Brother Ken? Because that is in me than he that is, okay, oh, 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 let me just, let, can we go there just for a couple more time? Is I don't want to over, I don't want to, I don't want to wear my welcome out. Is this all right? Can you hold your place right here in Second Thessalonians? Go with me to First John 4. Are y'all doing all right out there? Yeah. All right, I hadn't made you mad yet, have I? All right, well, I don't want to. I want to make you glad. My daddy used to tell me you can get glad in the same pants you got mad in. Look right here in 1 John 4. Look in the first verse. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. I'm going to just share this with you now. Anybody that and says church is non-essential is a false prophet. Well, he's not a preacher. Honey, you don't have to be a preacher to be a false prophet. That's right. That's right. right? You're already false. Anybody that says church is not essential and we need to shut this thing down, but we need to leave loaves open, that's a false prophet. Yes. You got to try these spirits. You know, I, I'm sad. We don't ever go back to church. I hope we don't ever go back to church. I don't want to go down there and catch some disease. I said, have you been to Home Depot? Oh, yeah. I said, you been to Kroger? Oh, yeah. I said, Do you, what, is COVID-19 not there? Does COVID-19 go to Kroger? Oh, can't go in there. But we can sure go to church. It says, Hereby know you the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. There are religions out there today that we have one of our candidates that wants to be teaching this in our schools. Want to teach a religion in our schools that says Jesus is not the Son of God? That he's a good man? He may have been a prophet. Oh, he was a good man. 
He was a prophet. But let me tell you the greater thing. He was the son of the living God. He was the son that the Holy Spirit overshadowed a virgin. He came forth and for 30 years he prepared and for three and a half years he proved that he was the son of the living God. And if your religion don't believe that, your religion is wrong. Sorry, because your religion had a high priest that's dead. He's dead. You go to his tomb, there's bones in it. But my high priest, you go to his tomb, it's empty, and we know he is seated at the right hand of God, ever living to make intercession for us. And he's just waiting for God to say, go get him, and he's coming back for the church. I call that essential. All right, let's go a little farther. Here's what I wanted to get to anyway. I'm sorry. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God, and this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof you've heard that it should come, and even now, already, it is in the world. Here we go. Watch this now. Are you ready to shout? We're going in the shouting ground right here. But you are of God, little children, and you have overcome them. Glory to God. Glory to God. It says, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Did you see that? Next verse is even just as important. Watch this. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world hears them. Why are Christians hearing them? Why, why are we hearing them? They say it's for your safety. Is church not the safest place you could possibly be? If there's any COVID-19 in here, it's dead now. It's dead. It's inoperative. It's powerless in this place because we are believers. Another translation says, they speak from the world's perspective. I like this one. They speak the language of the world. the language of the world. But greater is he. Listen, folks, you know what Pastor Billy said was absolutely the truth about keeping your health? But you also have to keep your power the same way. You got to look in your mirror every morning and say, oh, and by the way, not only is my body healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, the greater one is in me today. And no matter what comes my way today, Satan, let me serve you notice. The greater one is going to jump up out of me. He's going to overcome you. He's going to put you to flight right now. Let me tell you, devil, I'm going to win today. And if I'm not in heaven tomorrow, I'm going to win tomorrow. Because that same greater one didn't leave today. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what? I'm not hearing this priest. You know what I'm hearing priest? Fear. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. How can you ever be afraid if the greater one's living in you? For the Lord is our God. Whom shall we fear? If you'll talk more about the greater one and less about fear. I mean, we've had months on fear. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Let's don't even talk about afraid. Right. Let's talk about the power of God. Yes. In fact, we should never have been afraid. <laughs> okay. All right. Go back over with me to 2 Thessalonians. What time do y'all usually quit here? About 12? Is 12 the holy hour? (laughs) 
Well, believe this. I had a pastor tell me the other day, he said, Brother Ken, we love having you. My people bug me to have you in, but would you please buy a watch? <laughs> okay, 2 Thessalonians. Watch this now. Sixth verse. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed. Another translation prevents. The mystery of iniquity does already work. Watch this now. Only he that now prevents will prevent until he be taken out of the way. <laughs> I thought I'd get a shout right there. In other words, who's doing the preventing? Who's going to be taken out of the way? Us. So it's got to be the church. For all my life, even when I first got saved, I got saved in 1980, 2020, what, 40 years. For 35 years of those, I saw a strong church. But all of a sudden, I began to see a church that said, well, let's don't talk about the blood no more. You know our young people are not going to like that blood stuff. It's gory to them. Let's don't, let's don't offend them. Don't talk about the blood. I said, Pastor, if I don't talk about the blood, then we might as well pack up and go home. Yeah. Because, honey, it was the blood that did the trick. Yeah. It was the blood that did the trick. blood cleansed you from sin you had no power over. That blood was so strong that it wiped completely off your record, that if God were to look your record up, he'd go, my God, they never sinned. There's not no sin on their record right here. Their record has been expunged. Their record has been cleared. Glory to God. Because of that blood, you can walk into my presence. You don't have to walk in with a doubt or shame or guilt. You can walk in and say, Father, I come into your presence. I'm a child of the living God. I'm blood soaked with the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. I said, Lord, on my record is no, there's nothing on my record. I am innocent. I am acquitted. Glory to God. There's nothing on my record that would harm my relationship. I am clean by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus. I said, Pastor, you can't talk about Jesus without talking about the blood because he said he didn't come to be ministered to but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. When he gave his life, he said, I shed my blood for them so that Adam did, all that thing that they've ever done. It's as if it never happened and they could walk righteously into my Father's presence. Glory. But see, most people say, well... I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. Come here. Sit, come here, sit right here. I'm just so unworthy. And I hate it when I ask somebody, how you doing? I quit asking that question. How you doing? Better than I deserve. Better than I deserve. Come here, let me lay my hands on you suddenly better than you deserve. You're not walking in what you deserve. Can I show you what you deserve me five minutes? Go with me to Luke, the 16th, or the 15th chapter. Luke 15. You know the story. The prodigal son. I want to I focus in on one statement made here. Luke 15. My mind's going a thousand miles a minute. I tell don't the Holy Ghost know I'm from Kentucky? Dear God. Slow people call us slow. Look here at verse 17. I don't know if you underline in your Bible or not, but you might want to underline this. If you can't underline in your Bible, go buy you one today you can mark in. And, and when he came to himself. Did you see that? What Pastor Billy did for me was he began to open my eyes. Because I kept thinking, why would a man that don't even know me, 
Why would a man, you know, when I, well, the way I lived was I took care of me. I said, I got three people to take care of, me, myself, and I. Everybody else, you're on your own. Deal with it. But I had a man that I didn't even know. I had never seen you before, Hatter. Walk into my room. From that day on, as they pray for me, my thought life began to change. I began to go, oh, I don't know what his angle is. I kept thinking, what's his angle in this? Here's what his angle was. He's trying to get me out of that hell hole I was in. I know now. But I came to myself, and I began to realize I wasn't cool. I came to realize that my way of living was and he began to eat at me. It's your fault. <laughs> I couldn't even enjoy a cold one no more. I said, oh, man. <laughs> right? This man came all the way from Lafayette, Tennessee, and prayed for me, and I didn't even know him? Uh, there might be a little something to this. As it went on and on, I came to myself. I realized I was in the pig pen. But here's what else I realized. Watch this. How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no more worthy. I'm no more worthy. First thing the devil does, what does he do? You're not worthy. You don't deserve this. <laughs> Can I share this with you? Chapter 5. It makes a statement. I'm not going to go there for interest of time. The Bible says we didn't sin after the similitude of Adam. In other words, I didn't do what Adam did, but yet I'm suffering for what Adam did. But God said this. I'm not going to have my suffering that didn't do that. Amen? Here's what God said. They deserve better. They deserve my best. And there's only one that can get them out of this mess. And that's my best. And his name is Jesus. And he's going to go down there. And he's going to bear all that junk for them because they didn't do what Adam did. Connie and I learned when we had kids, a parent becomes an investigator. <laughs> Amen? You know, like we know, it's going to go down. But what we had to do, get to the bottom of it. We had to find out which one was the culprit. Because you can't just, now I, I, knew, I knew parents that would do this. They'd line all the kids, whoop them all. See, that's not right. Because they're going to grow up thinking, my father did something to me that I didn't deserve. Let me go say that on this side. My father did something to me that I didn't deserve. And it'll always be in their heart. This is why people don't come to Jesus. Because they think God's killing folk. They think God is bringing tribulation on folks to try to teach them something. Why do I want with a God that's going to make me sick? This COVID-19 is just God's wrath. Honey, you don't want to see God's wrath. That's right. yeah. Believe me. Just ask the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, you can't. They're dead. Yeah. Yeah. Kentucky Fried Chicken didn't come up with extra crispy. <laughs> God did. Right. <laughs> he said... I will arise and go to my father and say, I've sinned against you. I'm no more worthy to be called your son. Now watch this. We all know the story. He goes. What did the father do? He didn't say, well, you know, let's walk down there and meet that scoundrel. Oh, Lord, hey, he's back. Dear God, what's he want now? Right? There's that knucklehead. Right? 
dumber than a rock. He didn't say that, did he? He got some shoes. He got a robe. He got a ring. Go find my best meat. Find my best cheeses. Set it up. I'm not going to walk down there to meet him. I'm so excited about him coming back, and I'm going to run as fast as I can. <laughs> Listen, God moves at the speed of light. When you came to yourself and you asked him to be your Lord, he came to you at the speed of light. He didn't walk towards you. He didn't saunter down the road. He came to you at the speed of light. This gets better, honey. I'm, on, I'm about ready to close. Y'all hang with me, all right? This is, I'm, my sermons are like barbed wire, a point here and a point there. So let me make all my points and I'll go home. Is that all right? So he comes and the brother gets mad. Guess what? The brother had a right. But this is why it says don't let your son go down on your wrath. This is why the Bible says, give place under wrath, for vengeance is mine, says the Lord. This is how I learned how to walk in love. He said, you might not want to do me wrong, because vengeance is the Lord's. I'm going to stand here and smile at you. Poof. So, he goes, and you know what it said. The son said, you know what? You never did give me no ring. You, you never did give me no robe. You never did give me no shoes. You never did cook nothing for me. Watch this. Are you ready to shout? If you're here and you don't feel like you're worthy, look at here. Watch this. Look in verse 31. Shouting ground. He said to him, son, you've always been with me. And everything I had. <laughs> Everything I had was yours. It's all the time. Yeah. All right. Why didn't you use it? Amen. You're a grown man. I don't have to force feed you. That's why it says he prepares a table for us right in the presence of our enemies. Yeah. It's right there on the table. Go get it. All, right. all the time when I was a heathen, Everything God had was mine. It was already mine. People say, well, the Lord's been after me. He never was after you. He never was after you. He's sitting on the throne. Put it out there. Now, if you can eat it, you'll get the benefits. If you don't eat it, the force be with you. All right? Let's get over here and close. Let's go back to 2 Thessalonians. 7th verse. For the mystery of iniquity is already at work. Only he that prevents he be taken out of the way. Did you see that? So then who's faulty? Okay, if we are the force that prevents him from being revealed, then only the church can be the force that can keep him from working like he is in our country. So, I mean, I'm not trying to come in and criticize anybody. But anytime we want to do something about this, anytime we want to do something about Washington, anytime, we want this thing from we want to change this from the new normal back to what's really normal. The church is the one that's gonna to have to do it. Amen. We've got to let that power that's in us begin to be the driving force behind all that we do. And we gotta quit saying, well, pastor's having another prayer meeting tonight. I'm not, I don't wanna go down there and pray. I'm embarrassed to pray. Around anybody. How, are, are, are you embarrassed to pray around everybody when all this is going on? Do you want COVID-19 to go away? Yes. Then you better quit being embarrassed and let somebody hear you pray. If you can't say nothing but praise your Lord, praise your Lord, yes. praise, then come down here when they call a prayer meeting and pray. All right. 
People say, I see you wear a mask. I said, I do. He said, are you afraid? I said, no. He said, why are you wearing it? I said, for respect for others. I do it because I want people to know I respect your health. I don't believe this is going to help. But if you think it will, Paul said, I become all things to all men that I might save us. So if I got to wear a mask, I'll wear a mask. But I'm telling you right now, it's not going to save us. It's going to save us. What's this? Let's finish tonight, today, in Nahum. If I don't quit preaching, it'll be tonight. That's all right. My wife's already given me the look. <laughs> she gives I know what she's saying. It's time to shut her down. I said, okay, baby. I want to listen to my wife. Go with me back over to Nahum. You know what? I had that in my Bible. I wanted to say this because Pastor Dot brought out a great, great scripture there in Nahum. Let me show you what else that he said. Where is it? Come on, Ken. Is it next to Micah? Right after Micah? Thank you, darling. Oh, yes. Eureka. I found it. Now, Pastor Dot said... The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. You ought to hold on to that like a bulldog on a bone. He knows them that trust him. You ought to hold on to that like a bulldog on a bone. Go right down here to nine. Are you ready to are you ready to go the you ready to leave? You ready to leave shouting? What's this? What against the Lord? He shall make an utter end. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Amen. See, we don't want to put a Band-Aid on this. <coughs> we don't want a mask to wear a mask the rest of our life. COVID-19, in fact, every sickness and disease needs to come to an utter end. Yes. Yes. God's children are not supposed to manage symptoms. Are we? No, we're in the Bible. You know, the doctor said, well, we can manage your symptoms. I said, well, what scripture and verse was that? Well, the doctor said it. I said, what scripture and verse was that? Well, the doctor said it. So the doctor's final authority in your life, if you'll take this pill, it'll manage your symptoms. That means your symptoms are still there. Yes. Yes. That means that you just got a mask on it. But a lot of people are happy. Well, they're not bothering me no more. You know that every one of those pills they give you affects your liver? And when you stay on medication for years and years and years, then all of a sudden you go, mm, mm, mm. I'm having some pain right here. You go to the doctor, oh, your liver's eat up. Then you got some serious problem. Amen. What about if I present you an utter end? He said, God can make an utter end. What does the rest of that scripture say? You ready to shout? If you don't shout here, you're not going to shout. And here's what he's going to say. And this affliction that I've made an utter end to will never, ever, ever, never rise again in your body. Well, there's a Pentecostal leg kick somewhere right there, right? Never rise again in your body. Why can't we just say it like this? God... Thank you for making an utter end to the spirit of Antichrist. We can't keep the real Antichrist from being revealed, but we can keep his spirit yes. Yes. out of our nation. Amen. People ask me all the time, well, what about other nations? They don't know. Right? They're on their own. I can't pray for them. I don't live there. I live here. And it's time for the Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist, to be shut down, yeah. never to rise again while we're here. Now, I believe I can say that here. There are other churches where people, my pa pastor comes and says, you're just a little too strong for us, Brother Ken. You just preach it just a little too strong, Brother Ken. I said, well, I'm not going to preach it weak. There you go. Amen. <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to preach that no more anyway. You're just a little. 
I had another one, another man tell me, you're yeah, just a little too far out there. I said, and I'm planning on going farther, farther, and farther, and farther, and farther. Because when he said he'll make an utter end, that's exact. He didn't, he didn't say, okay, well, okay, there's a, there's a space there. And I'll tell you what, let's just put this in there. I'm not going to do it. Make an utter end. God didn't put any scripture in there that he didn't mean. All scripture is God breathed. You're right, brother. Given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. Here we go. And instruction in right doing. Say, say this with me. I am deserving of God's best. And I will not accept anything less than God's best in my life. Hallelujah. Stand up. I'm sorry I went so long, Pastor. Forgive me.